This is Ian Pretty from the Retro Computer Shack. In this video I'll show you how to connect an Amstrad CPC 6128 to a TV via the SCART input using my RGB SCART lead which connects the video out from the Amstrad to the SCART input on the TV. To use this SCART lead you'll need two additional power supplies which I don't supply. So this lead is only aimed at the more experienced enthusiast and not the beginners. So if you're not able to be able to, to source these power supplies, uh, then please don't buy my SCART lead. But instead, if you have a look on eBay, you'll find another seller that sells their version of the SCART lead and will be able to supply the uh, power supplies as well. So let's have a look at the power supply requirements. The 464 and 6128 computers originally take the power from the monitors. So if you now want to connect it to a TV, you'll need to provide two power supplies for the 6128. The Amstrad CPC 464 just requires one 5 volt DC power supply, roughly about 2.4 amps, with a 2.1 by 5.5 DC power plug, and the tip is positive. The Amstrad CP 6, CPC 6128 needs an additional 12 volt power supply, which is to power the disk drive, which plugs into the grey curly cable. Uh, this requires a 12 volt DC power supply, about one amp or more, uh, and it requires a 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 DC power socket, and the plow to reverse, so the tip is negative, which is not standard. The 5 volt power supply can be found easily. The 12 volt power supply needs adapting. I use a, a standard 12 volt power supply, which I'll give you the information of in a sec and then cut the D DC power plug off and solder on uh, a 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 socket and reverse the polarity which makes the tip negative. These are the power supplies I'll recommend for this video just because they're, let me just uh, zoom out again then we can see that, just because they're uh, a good uh, balance between quality and price. They're not too expensive. They're not the highest quality, but they're perfectly okay. That's the five volt power supply, which is a plug type adapter with a 2.1 millimeter by 5.5 DC power plug, and the tip is positive. The 12 volt power supply that I use for the disk drive is that one. It's again a plug top type power supply Apply, and I've removed the uh, DC power plug that was on it and replaced it with a 2.1 mil B5.5 DC power socket and reversed the polarity so the tip is negative. You can also make up um, use a combined uh, multiple output power supply desktop power supply like this meanwhile one which gives 5 volts plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts don't need the minus 12 volts on the Amstrad and comes with a 5 point din a 5 pin din plug so you can then make an adapter for that to uh, power the, uh, the the CPC as well or you can make um, an additional just all in one unit like I used here which has both outputs Right, so let's uh, connect everything up. Make sure you uh, switch the computer and the TV off. The uh, SCART lead has a DIN plug, a power supply input socket, a power supply for the computer itself, and a stereo sound lead. The reason you need to pay, the reason you need to put the power supply into the socket and then power the computer from the plug is that the video output on the Amstrad doesn't have a suitable voltage for the SCART blanking signal on pin 16 which basically switches the TV into RGB mode. Without that you'll get a very dull screen or you'll have um, sync problems where the screen flickers. I take the power supply, feed it through the SCART lead, attenuate the voltage at the SCART end, and it provides a blanking voltage of about blanking signal voltage of about two volts, which um, the tolerance is one to three volts, and that uh, seems to be um, quite successful with the majority of TVs, CRT, LED, or uh, LCD. 
Right, so let's connect everything up. So we connect the uh, DIN plug to the monitor socket on the Amstrad. Then connect the power plug from the SCART lead to the power plug input on the Amstrad. Then connect the stereo sound lead to the stereo jack on the Amstrad. Next, we need to connect the 12 volt lead, which is the disk drive connector. So that's the power supply you'll need to supply, and that's the lead that comes from the Amstrad. And then we we'll turn that around, and that just leaves the 5 volt connection to the SCART lead there. So now we need to plug the 5 volt in, which is there. And that's all the connection on the computer end. At the other end of the SCART lead is the SCART plug, which plugs into the TV. I've already plugged this one in, so uh, that should be okay. Next, we need to switch the TV on and select the SCART input. So on this one, the SCART input is labelled up as EXT. So I'll switch that on, I'll just knock that light out. Well, that's will switch the computer on. Oh, the other thing is to make sure the um, your aspect ratio of the TV is set for 4.3. The, let me just switch that light out, there we go. Uh, just check the aspect ratio is set for 4.3, um, or 4.3. It will work in widescreen mode. Oh, it's going now to focus. Let me switch the computer on so we get a picture on the TV. That's better. It's uh, it, the video cam wouldn't focus. Um, the picture size, uh, the aspect ratio is four three. That's the same for all retro computers. You can switch it into sixteen nine widescreen mode. It will work, but you get an unusually wide screen. So it's personal choice that I prefer to keep it as it was intended. So I'm going to keep it to four three. So I switch the computer on and switch the disk drive on, and as you can see, we get the normal. Amstrad screen there, so I'll just load up a game Let's try again. That's better. I'm going to spell it right. Rin doesn't work, but run does. And hopefully we should get uh, a good quality picture with uh, stereo sound. And there we go. Just zoom in a little bit. It might lose focus if I get too far in. Um, so you should get a nice clear colour vivid screen with stereo sound that comes from the TV which allows you to turn the volume down on the Amstrad if you want. You can turn it completely off. Well hopefully it'll be as easy as that for you. If you do have any problems connecting it then have a look at my troubleshooting guide. I'll leave the links below the video on YouTube for the power supplies, troubleshooting guide and all the other relevant information. That's about it for this video. I hope you find that useful. Thanks for watching and I'll uh, be back soon.